We have a very special program today because with us is Rabbi Chaim Wrightput, a very dear friend of mine. We met 25, I don't know how many years ago, and we worked together for maybe two decades in Venezuela. Rabbi Wrightput is exceptional. He was born in the United States, but he went to Israel to get married. And he is working, as I say, for the past 25 years in Venezuela, and he is doing an extraordinary job. Rabbi Raipot is a rabbi of the Union Israelita de Caracas, but in addition, he is the one in charge of kosher food. That means the following, you know, he's a shochet. Shochet is a ritual slaughterer. In order for us to consume meat, a cow or an animal that is going to be used has to be slaughtered in a certain way. And Rabbi Wrightport knows all the traditions, all the laws, and how to do it, and he do it. You also have to go through a salting procedure, many things that you have to do, and Rabbi Wrightport is the general supervisor of the Kashrut of the Union Israelita. He has people working with him who are mashgichim. That means they actually are in place when there is an event going on to make sure that all the laws are followed. We, for instance, do not mix dairy and meat. If something has 1% of milk in it, it's already considered a dairy product, and it cannot be used with milk at the same time. We have different dishes, different pots. Well, this is not a lecture about kashrut, but all this is the responsibility of Rabbi Wright. But in addition, he also circumcises babies. He's a moel. Every Jewish male has to be circumcised on the eighth day. Rabbi Wrightput is expert in that as well. Rabbi Wright was also a sofer. Sofer means he knows how to write a Torah, for instance. But in practice, in practice what we need is sometimes when there is a separation, a divorce between two people, you have to write a bill of divorce. That is called the get in Hebrew. You need a special person to do it. Rabbi Wrightput knows how to do that because there are many laws about it. And if you violate one of the laws, then the divorce is no longer valid. And that has great implications on children and what have you. So Rabbi Wrightput does that too as well. So Rabbi Wrightput, let me welcome you here and thank you very much for allowing us to interview you on this occasion. Tell us, Rabbi Wrightport, how do you like the Union Israelita de Caracas? How do you like the Jewish community? You've been there for 25 years. Do you think it's a good Jewish community? It's a very special community. It's a warm community, a very united community, it's a, it, and I enjoy very much working in Venezuela. Uh huh. And tell me, Rabbi Wright, but what do you see for the future? Do you think that this Jewish community, taking into consideration the difficult political, social, economic situation, will the Jewish community be able to survive, you think? Yes, I do think so. I think that the community is always getting stronger, um, taking uh, into consideration what is going on, but uh, the as I mentioned once before, that the community is, the Jewish community, when you press them harder, they get stronger, and they have become much stronger, much more united during this time. Does the Jewish community have schools for the children? How do you make sure that the traditions are imparted to future generations? Do we have schools there? We have four different schools. Um, there is, a, everybody can find a place where they will feel comfortable, where they can learn. All the Jewish children are always in the Jewish, in the Jewish system. And uh, this helps us a lot with the fact that, that there shouldn't be mixed marriages because the children get to know themselves at young ages. And uh, they stay together, they stay united through all the years. What is the relationship between Jews that come from Eastern Europe, some from Germany, from Lithuania, from Poland, from Romania, that are called Ashkenazic Jews, and then the Sephardic Jews that come from Spain, from Northern Africa, Turkey. What is the relationship between these two groups in Venezuela? We have a unique situation where even though we have maybe separate synagogues where we sing, we sing the prayers a little bit differently, but the fact is that many families marry together and everybody is united and everybody is found in all the functions and goes to the same school. It's a very, very united community. No confrontation. No uh, confrontation. Between no. That's very unique, you know, in many a uh, Jewish community that is very difficult. But in Israel, I think that the factor that 
eliminated a great part of the difference was the armed forces. You know, because Ashkenazim and Sephardim, they both serve in the same armed forces. Well, in Venezuela, we don't have a Jewish army to do that, but maybe it's the school, because both Ashkenazim and Sephardic Jews go to the same school. Can a Sephardic Jew eat in the Union Israelita? Would he feel comfortable that you fulfill the Jewish laws according to his tradition? Yes. Many of the Sephardic rabbis have actually made their um, marriages and bar mitzvahs in our uh, in our synagogue. We uh, there are certain things that the Ashkenazim are more strict, certain things that the Sephardim are more strict. And what we do is we, that we keep a level that will be on the top for everybody. We also have a mikveh, which is a ritual bath, and if I recall correctly, when you came to Venezuela after a little while, you redid that mikveh, you modernized it, and made sure that it fills, fits all Jewish restrictions that we have. Do many people avail themselves of the mikveh? Do Ashkenazim and Sephardim use the same mikveh? Both Sephardim and Ashkenazim use the mikveh. The mikveh is in use almost every night. There are nights that you can have five, six women coming. It's uh, Everybody knows that it's on the highest level. Actually, when we finished the construction, we invite, before we filled it up, we invited all the rabbis in the community, Sephardic and Ashkenazic, to come to see what we had done. And everybody agreed that this was done on the highest level. You have done, uh, you do circumcisions, as I mentioned, but you have done it also in other communities, in the Caribbean. Uh, how do you find the Jewish community of Venezuela compared to other Jewish communities? Do you think that we are doing quite well? We're doing very, very well. We're very, very strong. I was in Ecuador, it's a very weak community. I was in different countries. and. Um, we are very, very strong and very united. I was in other countries in the Caribbean that have strong communities, but not the kind of union that we have between the uh, um, Ashkenazim and Sephardim. You know, Rabbi, I agree with you, because I was there also for many years in Venezuela, and I try to think to myself, uh, what has happened in all these years? You have been there. You're still there. Do you feel that there is greater, a greater level of observance of tradition in the Jewish community today than 25 years ago when you first came? Yes. I feel that when I came, there was a much lower level of Judaism. And it has gone up and it has become much stronger. And the, the people in the that run the community have realized that the people in the community are looking for a higher level, and they have been there to respond and to give them what they need and what they want. You know, Rabbi, I think that the fact that there is greater tradition in the Jewish community of Venezuela is actually the force, the energy, that allows them to survive these difficult times. But how does this happen? How come the Jewish community is today stronger? I think that is a result of what People like you, Rabbi Wright, or do there. The fact that you give all you have, that there is no day and night. I know that you travel in the middle of the night to the interior of Venezuela in order to make sure that there is kosher meat. There is no such thing as a calendar for you when there's a necessity in the Jewish community. So it is people like you that make sure that the Jewish community flourish. And I want to wish you very good health. Same to your Rabbanit Milka and to your children and now to your grandchildren. God should give you health until 120 years so that you should continue to do your extraordinary work in the Jewish community. Rabbi Wright, God bless you. Thank Stay you. well.